Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be dating. Go with the flow. Well, I've got an email here from a female viewer that I'm going to go through today. And she writes in, She what was really cool, what I like about her email is that she she's 44. She got to a point, obviously, she realized she wasn't happy in her career, decided to make a career change. She became a flight attendant. But she also spent a year or two working on herself because she felt she had some codependency issues. She just wanted to get to a place where she felt good about herself and she enjoyed being single. So she did the work on herself. Now she started dating again and so she got involved with this guy that she met on the dating app Tinder. Had a great first date, had great sex in the first night. It was really wonderful. And then after the fact, you know, she's tried rearranging her schedule because she lives in a different state than the guy that she's actually dating. And so she's since gone and was rearranging her schedule. And it seems like every time they make plans to get together, it's either something comes up at work or something to do with the kids. But yet she's in a commitment with this particular guy that she hardly ever sees. And so she asked me my opinion on how and also how I think she should proceed with it. So it's a, a, a great email because there's something in here towards the, the end of her email. It's a response she sends to this guy that she's dating. And it's like – it's just total perfect case in point when I talk about how women t- tend to give an example of something. They're not – and like when I coach women, I, I teach them that they need to be sp- specific, give step-by-step instructions to a guy because women tend to do this. They tend to give an example and – the they talk about this vague premise or they tell a story and they expect the guy to read between the lines in the story and know what she's trying to communicate with him. So I got a quote that I wrote in this topic and then we're going to go through her email. And the quote says, the superior approach to take when dating in order to naturally create and allow effortless relationships to unfold is to simply go with the flow. This means enjoying hanging out together, having fun together, and hooking up in a casual, non-attached way. By simply focusing on being the best romantic option that you can be, this will maintain your lover's sense of freedom to come and go as they please. This facilitates and causes them to choose you over all other potential lovers. Seeking to possess, control, or lock the other person down to a commitment will repel them. Letting things happen naturally without focusing on a commitment will attract them and cause them to want to always be with you. So let's take a look at her email. She says, Hi Corey, I found your videos on YouTube and I've been listening to them today. Most of your questions are from men and as a woman, I wasn't sure if I could submit a question but I knew it wasn't a coincidence I found you. So what the heck, here goes. Well, about 10% of my clients are women. For those of you women that are watching this, they're thinking, wow, he only gives advice for men. I was like, no, that's not true. It's just my book was originally written for men because quite frankly, they're the ones that need the most help because when you look at the statistics, interestingly, 95% of the self-help books on relationships are bought by women and only 5% are bought by men. So women already study this stuff way more than most guys do. But I appreciate the email nonetheless because it's a good email. She says, I'm a 44-year-old single woman. I haven't dated much in the last two years as I had really come to a place in my life where I wanted to focus on loving myself and learning the secret of contentment and being alone and dealing with some codependency issues I could see in myself. Well, I think that's absolutely fucking awesome. Oscar Wilde has this great quote that he said. It said something along the lines of, it's really a good thing after a relationship ends for you to be single for a while because that way you're able to be present with yourself where you're not defined by the other person. And you did that. It's, that's great. I think that's awesome and good for you. It's been an amazing journey and well worth the investment because I mean at the end of the day, I mean I did a video in the past week or so where I, I talk about that and that you, you got to be happy with yourself because you can't give away what you don't have for yourself. If you're not happy and you're thinking finding somebody else to have in your life is going to make you happy, well, 
you're going to make yourself miserable and that other person miserable once you realize that they're not the source of your happiness. He says, I really, or she says, I have really felt the desire to date now in hopes to find a great partner. Another thing that is new in my life is that I left a career of 20 years in the medical field to be a flight attendant. I had no strings holding me to anything and wanted the excitement to travel and meeting new people that being a flight attendant would offer. I think that's fucking awesome. And when you think about it, a couple hundred years ago, I mean, the life expectancy was like 35, was like really old. So, I mean, if you were just old enough to to get married, have kids, and hopefully you see your kids grow up and they get married eventually, and then you kick the bucket. I mean, now, especially like with all the DNA technology and stuff that's coming online, I mean, literally, human beings are going to be living to be hundreds of years old. We're all going to have more than one career and more than one relationship in our life. Because the old, the old ways of doing things in the past, just they don't really apply to this modern day. She says, all of this brief info leads me to my question. A few months ago, I decided to try the Tinder dating app. And as a flight attendant, I had a long overnight in Burbank, California and decided to try it out. I started talking to a guy in the app and decided to meet him that night for a drink. So notice that. She's in town. She wants to meet somebody. She's on the app. She's ready, willing, and able to date. For those of you guys and girls that are on the dating app, this is important. This is an illustrative point. There's no fucking reason to be on a dating app and send a thousand texts back and forth over the course of two or three weeks before you, before you finally meet somebody. A few messages back and forth, then it should go. You should be exchanging phone numbers. And then you should talk on the phone no more than 10 to 15 minutes to get a good feel for the other person. And if you like talking to them on the phone, there's a really good chance you like talking to them in person. At the end of the day, even though you got pictures and stuff, there's still a possibility you're going to meet in person. They don't look anything like their pictures. So another thing that would be good is to do either a Skype video date or do a FaceTime call with them before you meet them. That way you're going to be pretty sure they're going to look good enough. You know, Because that's the thing with, with the downside to online dating. If you meet the people and there is a really good chance they're not going to look as good in person as they do in their pictures. So it's like you get right to the point. A few messages back and forth. You should be talking on the phone, video Skyping or doing FaceTime chat so you can see each other. And then like I said, really you only need to talk 10 or 15 minutes. You say, hey, you know what? We should get together and meet up for a drink. When are you free? Or let's get together and go have some dinner. When are you free? Well, I'm free this evening. Great. Let's get together. Whatever. Make a date. I see way too many guys doing that shit. They just sit there and chit chat back and forth, back and forth. It's, I fucking hate texting and messaging on a phone as it is anyway. It's a pain in the ass with your thumbs trying to type like that. It's like, and I, I know there's a lot, especially like younger crowd of people. It's like that. It's all day long. That's all they're doing. They're not even paying. T- you go downtown anywhere. You go outside and everybody's just looking at their phones like a bunch of fucking zombies. Get to the fucking point. Make a date. So back to her email. She says, we met and hit it off immediately. We had some drinks, we played pool, and we had a great time. Hang out and have fun, hook up. It really was effortless, like we knew each other all our lives. So obviously there was chemistry. You you liked him, he liked you. You're hanging out, you're having fun. Is there any hooking up? Well, let's see. It actually took me by surprise because I really wasn't expecting such a connection. I invited him to my room. Would you like to come up? Sure. I'll come up. We'll see what pops up. And we had amazing sex with true organic chemistry. Women want to be in a love story. And look at that. She gets on the dating app Tinder and later that night, they're fucking each other's brains out. That's easy. That's effortless. That's the way it's naturally supposed to be. Two people who like each other who are not holding back. And all the other crap that gets in the way in most people's relationships is a bunch of bullshit. It's unnecessary. I had to fly out the next morning, so we exchanged numbers, and really there were no expectations set on anything relationship-wise, so I guess just a hookup. How many times have you heard me say, women like sex just as much as guys do? Case in point, here's another woman hanging out having fun and hooking up. He texted me right away and expressed how much he enjoyed our time together and hopes to see me again. I was very open to that as I definitely felt the connection. We texted back and forth quite a bit, phone conversations, sexting, etc. 
He initiated trying to be exclusive after one date. Trying to lock you down, trying to possess you. Instead of – it's like putting the cart before the horse. They have one date and yeah, they hooked up. But it's like they don't really – still don't really know each other yet. But he wants to lock her down because he's a flight, she's a flight attendant. Oh, some other guy might come along and steal her from me. So I got to like get her to a, commit to me and that way I don't have to worry about another guy stealing her. That's what's really going on in his mind. Besides, that's what it shows in all the TVs and the movies that you're supposed to do. Lock him down in a commitment. He initiated trying to be exclusive even though the distance and our work schedules were difficult. I agreed because neither one of us stayed around and really wanted to try to just see each other. It's way too fucking soon. He lives in Southern California and I live in Denver. With our different work schedules and his time with his kids, it's been very challenging to see each other. We have only seen each other one time since our first date in a month. And you're exclusive with somebody you've been on two dates with. Think about that. The other times we scheduled to see each other had to be canceled due to work or issues with his kids at the last minute. This has created some pressure and undue stress. Yesterday, we decided we would not set any expectations on when we would see each other, but just go with the flow. That's a smart approach. The going with the flow idea in the last eight hours since our discussion has left me uncertain and confused. First of all, you can't get to know someone unless you spend time together. Yep, true which has been a challenge for us. That's why you should be dating other men instead of just this one dude. Because the fact that you hooked up one time and he locked you down to a commitment, that tells me he's insecure. He's not wanting to be in a commitment because he feels so good and you guys have such a great time when you spend time together. I mean, you've only been together once. But he's really trying to lock you down so he feels comfortable he's not gonna lose you to another guy. That's really what's going on here. Secondly, I don't respect his indecisiveness and lack of communication on the times we have set to see each other. Another reason why – this is why you date. You see how they are. You don't agree to a commitment after one date. I mean that's ridiculous. I mean, that's, this guy obviously hasn't read my book. Lastly, why would I agree to be exclusive with someone I met one time and had an awesome connection with? That seems ridiculous. Exactly. I totally agree with that statement. As a flight attendant, we bid for our schedule and days off a month in advance. Before this discussion yesterday, I bid my scheduled days off around his schedule with his kids so I could fly and see him on our days off. He told me yesterday that he doesn't want me going out of my way and making all the effort to see him when things may change at the last minute. Yeah, it's like, so this guy's got you, got you all locked up and you occasionally get together, but yet he seems to cancel at the last minute. I mean he could have two other, two or three other women that he's doing this with and you're just somebody, OK, well, yeah, I'll get together with her. She's not the girl I really want to hang out with but when the other girl's not available, hey, she's a great backup. That's another reason why you don't commit right away. I want to see how they are. Maybe it was just a one-time thing. Maybe you got together and you just hooked up for a week and that was the end of it. I mean because the bottom line is just like I talked about in the quote, when you give each other the freedom to come and go – if you're the best option in that other person's life, they're going to want to spend more and more time with you and vice versa. It just naturally happens. Really, it's just you're locked up to soothe his own ego. And obviously, it's bothering you because you're not getting your needs met. So I calmly said, well, you have my schedule for May. If you want to see me, let me know. Otherwise, I'm moving on with doing whatever and I want – doing whatever I want on my days off now. That's exactly what you should be doing. You're jumping through your butt trying to accommodate him and then he blows you off the last minute and you don't see him anyway. So now you're disappointed. Yet he wants me not seeing other guys. What the fuck? Exactly. Just say I'm not going to agree to that. We've, we've had two dates. That's just ridiculous. I threw out the friends card which was really let's just call it quits and suggest that he find a woman to date in his area. He says he doesn't want that and he wants me when whenever it can happen. So great. Have an open relationship with him. He's just getting you to commit to it so he feels better. You're just like an option to him from what it sounds like. Since our conversation yesterday, I've completely backed off. I have not initiated any text. I wouldn't because he hasn't earned it. 
He texted me a good night last night and I didn't respond. I responded this morning with this quote below and I hope that he enjoyed his time with his kids this week. I agreed with the I agree with the below statement completely, but I am hoping this leads to a long term relationship. Quite frankly, I don't see a long term relationship happening with this guy, judging by his behavior. You took yourself completely out of the market, which is a mistake. But also you're giving him this vague diatribe, which is what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. This is why most guys go, huh? When a woman says something like this. Now another woman should understand completely where you're coming from and what you're getting at. But it's like you're telling them a story and you want them to read between the lines. And so here's her little diatribe that she puts in the text. Not every girl wants to be in a relationship. Some just want good company, a guy to vibe with, converse with, and laugh with. Not in a rush. Start off simple and let the rest find itself. Having someone to talk to and feeling comfortable around them is quite beautiful and it's a good feeling. How many of you guys are watching this going, huh? So let, let me decipher this. Not every girl wants to be in a relationship. In other words, she doesn't want to be locked down to him because, quite frankly, he's not earning that. But I guarantee you, he probably has no idea what you're trying to say to him. Some just want good company, a guy to vibe with, converse with, and laugh with. In other words, I just want a guy that I can hang out, have fun, and hook up with. Not in a rush. In other words, just go with the flow. Let's see what happens. Don't lock me down to a commitment. Start off simple and let the rest find itself. In other words, go with the flow. Hang out, have fun, and hook up, which is a magic formula I talk about all the time. Here's another woman in her vague own way communicating the same thing. Having someone to talk to and feeling comfortable around them is quite beautiful and it's a good feeling. In other words, she really enjoys the chemistry that she has with them, but she's not digging being committed to only him. In other words, you're just an option to this particular guy and you know what? He needs to be just an option to you because he hasn't earned the exclusivity yet. And so you just I would just say, hey, I'm going to date other guys. I'm going to date other people and you can date whoever you want. And if he says, well, I don't want that, just say, well, quite frankly, you haven't earned me being exclusive yet. So maybe down the road, if I see that your behavior is consistent and decisive and you follow through in your commitments, maybe I'll be open to it. But this is all I can offer you at this point. In, in essence, you're going to give him a take it or kind of leave it approach. And so I like the fact that you're doing this, but you've got to be direct. You've got to remember. You've got to spell things out. You can't expect him to read that paragraph and read between the lines. Any woman reading that will go, oh, I know exactly where she's coming from. But the average guy hearing something like that, he's going to be like, does this apply to me? He's like, did she see this in a movie? He's like, he's not going to get it. It's going to, whoosh, it's going to fly right over his head. So ladies that are watching this, don't be vague like that. But I get what you're com where you're coming from. It's just the average guy is not going to get it. So she continues on. I've never done the long distance thing before, nor have I tried to date anyone as a flight attendant with the schedule I have. Can you give me any advice on the wisest way to handle this situation? I wouldn't t text or call him anymore. He's jerked you around enough. You've, I mean, you've flown to the city and then he cancels plans at the last minute when you got your flight all booked. Fuck that. He, he. Remember, and I, I talk because most of my clients are guys. And I'm always seeing the same thing. The other person's got to earn your time and attention, and he's doing the exact opposite. Of that he's losing your time and attention, and therefore you should be backing off. I wouldn't call or text this guy at all because he doesn't earn it. He cancels dates on you. So if you happen to be in his city, maybe you'll see. You know what? He should hop on a fucking plane and come see you. How about that? Why should you always go see him? It's give and take. You got to make sure that the other person is reciprocating. That's one thing I see that you're doing here is you're not paying attention to the fact that this guy's not reciprocating to you. Thank you for your time and passion to give back to build healthy relationships. But if I were you, if you want a relationship, you got to keep your options open. You should never, whether you're a guy or a girl, don't get exclusive unless you've been dating for at least two months or more. And If you follow exactly whether you're a guy or a girl, if, if you're going through the process of what I talk about in the book, it takes usually exactly seven weeks if you're a woman for the woman to fall in love with a guy who's doing exactly the things that I talk about in the book. That's the reality of it. One day, no way. Even a couple of days, it's just not enough. It's not enough time where you're around each other all the time to really get to know that other person. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. 
You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.